Hi, I'm Channing McCorriston, the container guy. Today, you'll be following along as we modify a 20-foot container into an MCC shack. We'll give you a step-by-step -step view on how we handle this container mod. We're gonna be installing a two-hour fire-rated wall system in this container and on the floor. The floor is gonna get a 5 8 Type X drywall and then a 3 16 checker plate floor covered. We'll be steel stud lining the interior and then cutting out the man door openings and installing the man doors and vents. After that, we'll spray foam and we'll line the interior with 5 8 drywall and plywood and then installing an AC unit, get into the finishing touches where we finish up the door handles and all the hardware, finishing interior trim that'll uh, clean it all up. And then lastly, just final coat of epoxy paint right before we ship this off to our customer. After landing a deal on national television in 2011, where his team pitched their idea of modifying shipping containers, he went on to start his own business. Since then, he's completed thousands of container modifications for clients in every major industry. Now, he wants to teach you everything he knows about container modifications and accessories. Channing McCorriston is The Container Guy. So the floor system is gonna have uh, first layer of the 5 8 Type X drywall and then the 3 16 checker plate on top. And then in the walls, we will be doing the 5 8 Type X drywall and then the 3 quarter inch fire rated plywood. So this will allow the customer to mount uh, electrical cables and uh, panels or whatever they're doing inside. We don't know. So this will give them a nice freedom and flexibility to mount anything anywhere inside the can. So the next step is we'll get the, uh, the welders to start laying the floor and then we'll take a look. So we're back to check in on the progress. The epoxy floor coating has dried over the weekend. This is a checker plate floor. We did two coats of epoxy. The customer needed a very easy to clean finish. The product was super easy to apply. We used a roller. Uh, it seemed to self level and it hardened up really nicely. We're back here now. We've actually pulled the container out of our shop. Uh, I see the guys have the man doors already installed and they've installed the T10 exhaust vent frame. So this is pretty cool. Container Modification World product comes the frame for the AC Infinity T10 exhaust fan. And then also, I guess the reason why we pulled this out is there's a bit of delay getting this, uh, this frame because we had to engineer an exact solution for the customer. They had a specific requirement of 10 inches tall and 28 inch wide opening. So what's going through here is a cable tray. So yeah, we just created a custom cable tray protrusion frame and just modified one of our AC frame for the job. So, and then over here, we have the interior view of this T10 exhaust vent frame. It's got the nut certs in here that allows us to install and remove the T10 exhaust vent. You know, if the motor ever dies, we can remove it easily. We'll have to frame around this nicely and clean it all up once all the interior is lined. And then same goes here. Here's the uh, custom frame that we built. We will be insulating all around plywood and drywall right up to it. And then we have a galvanized interior flashing that will go over and just clean this up real nice. This here is our eight inch intake damper. So we're gonna be using two of these intake dampers on the end wall of the container. And these will provide air to the T10 exhaust vent when it calls for it but they will close up and not ventilate this container until it calls for it. So in the winter time, you won't need to add extra heat to this container and worry about passive ventilating a unit. So here we finished up all the steel stud interior. Uh, just give you a bit of a tour. Again, we've used our uh, container door flashing kit. So this installs on the doors rather than having to stud the door. So this is going to retain all the spray foam and allow us to plywood and drywall line the interior of this container. Steel studs, got them installed. One huge tip here is that when you spray foam the container, typically you need to put this furring bar whether it be inside the studs through the holes that are meant for it or with the two and a half inch steel studs, it's kind of hard to get it in there. So a lot of times we'll just surface mount the furring bar to the studs. Then when they spray foam, uh, the studs don't 
twist as bad as they would and they don't bow so they're nice and plumb for your sheeting afterwards so without the spurring bar and if you're spray foaming you will run into a problem make sure you have this on there once it's all insulated then we just remove it we can reuse this for other projects well, something to just keep an eye out when you're framing the inside corners of a shipping container and planning to spray foam you need to make room for the uh, spray foam contractor to get his uh, nozzle into the corner so we've tacked this one stud in place to show you what not to do this stud should be further over and also the end wall stud so these two studs are tight there's no room for the spray foamer to get in and insulate and get a good vapor barrier in that corner so if you pull the stud back on both uh, this side and that side your drywall or plywood's not gonna have an issue spanning that extra inch and a half and your spray foam contractor is gonna be much happier with you. So our spray foam contractor will be here tomorrow morning. We're all ready for them. It's super important, I need to stress this, that you get ready for your contractor to arrive. You know what you need to tell them and walk through the container with the sprayer, not just their boss. Show them exactly any potential areas of concerns, if there's something you do or do not want insulated because more prep work the contractor can do, tape off any studs, make sure that you know something that doesn't need to be foamed doesn't get foamed. More prepared you are ahead of time, better job they do, less work later and just nicer, clean finish with the proper vapor barrier. They'll be doing two inches of foam on the underside, two inches in the walls, and two inches in the ceiling. We're blessed with the boss man at Comfort Insulation. We got Lewis here. He came in just to check on the progress and see how his eyes did. And I figured this is a great opportunity to snag him and pick his brain and get him to tell us what are the benefits of using spray foam in a shipping container. Hello, I'm from Comfort Insulation and I came just to check the spray foam that the guys did today in this container. This is a 20 standard container. We use two pound foam on the exterior cavity. Uh, two inches is the minimum required for a vapor barrier. As you can see, the framing is pretty well done. So we can have a continuous vapor barrier in every corner and we don't have any gaps whatsoever. This is pretty much what we're looking for making sure that the container is sealed 100% and you don't have any kind of condensation or anything like that happening in winter. What are the advantages of using spray foam versus a fiberglass bat insulation? Huge advantages with the spray foam, huge. A spray foam, as you can see, is a dense, we call it medium dense product, attached to the steel cavity. Yeah. So there is nothing in between, right? So there is no condensation. It becomes like a one structure. That condensation in the fiberglass insulation, that could lead to health problems? Tons of problems, tons of problems. Metal conducts tons of thermal. So when you actually try to put regular fiberglass, what you're doing is creating a gap inside and obviously future issues, that's yeah. what we're doing. So, and this way, as you can see, there is nothing in between. So all you need to do is just put a drywall on top, or in this case, if it's industrial, you can put OSB or plywood, it depends yeah. on what you're gonna use it for. Yeah. But this is all you need. I would not recommend doing a fiberglass insulation in an exterior wall in a container. Uh, particularly if you're gonna put heat or you know keep it warm during cold temperatures. Yeah. At the end of the day, you wanna buy things and, and, and build things that are gonna last long and this is the best way to do it. If you were to build a container home for, I guess, viewers that are, that are looking to do that, how, how much insulation would you suggest? I will say for a home, I will do three inches minimum. With three inches, you can achieve R20, which is pretty standard for regular homes that we have already at the city. How long does it take for the spray foam to cure and before you can occupy the space? Well, the spray foam um, reacts pretty quick, you know, in seconds, actually. So, but we always tell uh, contractors uh, just to wait a few hours, at least four hours, so that the fumes uh, can actually leave the, in this case, the container or the building, if it's a house. But obviously it's just for fumes, you know? It's nothing to do with the product. The product is pretty much ready at the same time that you apply. Luis and I, we've been working together for, for 10 years now. Uh, we became great friends. It's not our friendship that 
gets me constantly bringing him back. It's it's the the product, so spray foam alone, but also the way that his uh, staff apply it. So, you know, he has very strict quality control. He's here himself checking on his contractors, making sure they're doing a good job, making sure his customers are happy, and, and that's definitely what keeps us coming back to comfort insulation. Appreciate it. Thanks to the container guy, Channing, and all the staff. Uh, we've been working together for a really long time. Uh, different kind of containers, different modifications. Don't forget to come to the container guy for your next container. Great guys and great stuff. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Yeah, for sure. Here we're going to have a bit of fun trying to get the foam all uh, leveled off in behind here so that we can actually fit an inch and three eighths of interior lining inside this container door flashing kit. So we actually just developed a quick and easy little tool to allow us to almost screed the foam and at least give us an idea of where we need to remove a little bit with our oscillating tools. So we're back here now. We have the first layer of drywall ready to go inside the container door flashing kit. So here's the fire rated three quarter inch plywood. So we just got to lift this up into place and slide it through. So quite a bit of work, you know, just to get that, that spray foam leveled out in behind there so that these do fit because it is such a thick interior finish. Yeah, it was a tight fit, but it will fit tight uh, once we get all these screws through the flashing into the plywood. It'll be, uh, Super rigid and just super clean finish on this so the doors will operate perfectly once everything's all tidied up. So we just quickly check the fitment by closing the door and yeah. it's really nice and tight here. So yeah, we, we really like how that turned out. We'll have the same plywood finish here. There'll just be the galv strip in between. But yeah, super clean finish with this door flashing kit. So here again, we'll be using our number eight uh, wafer head Phillips wood screw and just now through the holes. So just continue that all the way along. And yeah, that thing will be in there solid. So we're back here just to check in on the progress. Uh, they have the uh, walls and ceiling, all with the first layer of the 5 8 Type X drywall. Just started on the 3 quarter inch fire rated plywood. So the end walls and the first sheet on the ceiling are installed. We put the ceiling sheets in first and then the side walls so that uh, they actually can you know, hold the sheets up. The plumber will be here shortly and he's going to start mounting the, uh, the upper head unit for our split air conditioner. So yeah, we'll check in on these guys in a little bit. Our plumber has finished uh, mounting the interior head unit and then run the, uh, the lines from that through the wall and to the exterior condenser. So uh, one thing to note, this mini split unit, it does require a uh, plumber to install it because they need to vac out all of the air and moisture out of the lines prior to releasing the refrigerant. We'll just jump inside here quick and just show you what that head unit looks like. It'll come with a remote and allow you, it's even got the, yeah, the defrost mode run, timers. So it'll, the remote will allow you to set your temperature inside your container. We really like these mini split units because it's just such a small hole that's cut through the container. In the winter time, you're not losing all of your heat through a large window shaker opening. To circulate air in this container, uh, we've chosen the T10 exhaust vent there and then in order for that exhaust vent to actually grab air from the outside and circulate it through, we have these uh, eight inch intake dampers. So these intakes here, when they're wide open, uh, they're wide open. So, you know, a bird or whatever could fly right in there. So we've actually laser cut and used some of our same mesh screen that we use on our bug screens for our big air vents. Yeah, we've got this here, that'll rivet on. And then when this intake louver opens up, that stops bugs, dust, or blowing snow, whatever, from entering into the container. One uh, intake damper there. They've already got the mitered trim flashing kit there. And then on the other side, still two do. The guys have just slid in the uh, T10 exhaust vent here. So this uh, installs on the inside of the container. We either use the M6 nut setter included or 
it's nice to get, you know, thumb screws actually that just easy for removal. These things, I think they last like 67,000 hours. So you shouldn't have to be replacing this very often. But yeah, we, we love this exhaust vent. It's got such an intuitive controller to adjust. Either you set high and low parameters for humidity or temperature. And we've also mounted the controller and just coiled up the wires for the customer. I find it kind of funny in here that, you know, we got these electrical components, but they're not plugged into anything. There's no power going into this can, but the customer is an electrical contractor and he's building this as an electrical uh, control room. So they'll be tidying up everything and doing the final fit and finish and placement of all the electrical components. Another thing to look at here, because it's going to an industrial site, uh, safety is a concern. And so we're installing a crash bar or panic hardware. I'll have a thumb latch on the outside, crash bar on the inside. Uh, with these things here, there's three different adjustments on them. You can adjust the spring tension that's inside of it. And then up top here, there are two uh, Allen key screw head there that you can either adjust the, uh, the closing rate or the latch rate. You gotta play around with how fast you want the majority of the door to swing and then how much uh, torque you want to just get it to latch. And make sure you read the instructions and just stick with it. Just got a few odds and ends to clean up, uh, finish caulking around some of the trim. After that, we will apply the second and final coat of epoxy on the steel floor, and then this thing is ready to deliver to the customer. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell for notifications, and also check us out at tcg.ca. Hope you learned something.